honored today to be interviewing Matt Artham. And uh, I literally just caught up with Matt, what, last year, a year ago? About a year? Yeah, in Vegas. And I, I haven't really spoken with Matt since about 2009. And uh, he had interned for me back in 2009. And since then, uh, he has really pretty much blown up. Your life has uh, grown immensely. And he started his own business, The Attractive Man. Is that correct? Mm -hmm. And so I was really curious because after Matt interned for me, he, he really you know, put, went to work building a successful dating business, dating coaching business. He specialized in basically day game and uh, teaching men to be powerful with women during the day. So after I spoke at this event in Vegas, just recently coming up, I went and looked at a lot of your videos and I was really impressed with the way he really embodied some of the principles and then put his own spin on it and really made it simple. Um, the thing that I like that I, that I think is super important and that I saw you doing the videos and the reason I want to interview him and I want you guys to meet him and understand what he's doing and check out his, his stuff is you 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 really adhere to how simple it can be. Mm -hmm. If you get under the surface of what you're saying, you pay attention to you know, the subcommunication, communication the tension, the feeling, less is more. Right. And uh, you talk that's, about that? That's kind of our, or my philosophy is like just, I mean, the, the more simple, the better, because I was interning for you. I was also working for another company and going to so many workshops at that time and reading everything. And I just had so much information in my mind and maybe you can relate if you're one of those information junkies who gets, who had, you know, at some point had information overload like I did and my skills were getting worse. And so I just decided to just kind of like strip everything away and figure out what needs to be there. What are the things that, like in a successful interaction, like what needs to be there? Do you really have to be cocky funny and tease and make jokes and use routines and nag and you know all those things that I was doing back then? Um, so I just wanted to see what really works and what doesn't work. And working for you guys put a lot of that into perspective. Yeah, for sure. Glad to hear that. Uh, one of the things I, I noticed in your videos is how well you used. Uh, because he, like, he has a lot of infield footage. So I highly recommend you check out his infield footage because I don't have a lot of infield footage and you can see a lot of the principles at play with his infield footage. Um, but one of the things I did notice is your strong use of voice tone, strong use of eye contact um, as a way of really connecting with women. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and I know you, you've really developed that a lot over the years since, since I saw you. And, uh, and can you talk a little bit about that? Sure. Yeah. Because a lot of people think that it's all about what you say. And that does make a difference to whatever degree, a small degree, I think. Um, because what's really going to spark the attraction is those subtleties, like all these really small adjustments, like eye contact, like just one little look away, you know, or one or two just small glances to the side or down can kill that attraction or that tension that you may have built. Especially those nervous, like, darty ones, you know, the, yeah. oh, didn't mean to do that. It just you don't even know what you're doing. Like, yeah. You guys don't even realize that. I didn't either. When I started filming myself, I realized I would put my hand on my glasses, would be hanging right here, and I'd just, like, have my hand there, or, like, you know, little fidgety things. Some guys do this. You know, there's all sorts of little things that are really, like, releasing tension, and just kind of kill the interaction in a sense. One of the biggest ones is talking too fast, trying to get everything out as quickly as possible instead of just like taking their time and having that space, you know, two seconds seems like 20 seconds. So that's where like, you know, the girl's kind of like testing in a sense unconsciously, like, okay, he's not nervous. He can like have these, these small pauses and he's just calm instead of like, Hey, I just had to come over and uh, whatever, whatever he wants to say. And this is where so, my, my big pet peeve with stuff like banter, cocky, funny, um, all this type of stuff is, it's not that that stuff doesn't work for a grounded, solid, calm dude. It, it works really well, but most guys use that stuff. And you tell me if you think this is true to compensate for all this nervous energy. Yeah. To cover it. Yeah. Exactly. So they're cocky, funny or they're banter. 
instead of being cracking a joke solidly and playing with the tension, is to get rid of the tension. It's the, does the it has the opposite effect of what it should have. Mm-hmm. And did you find that to be true? Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're laughing. They're creating laughter to release tension. And laughter is great. And girls, a lot of women will say they love a funny guy. But if you're doing it in the wrong place, or you're smiling, even smiling is great. You know, it's great to smile. We all, you know, love a smile when people are smiling. But it can release tension in certain moments. So you just kind of have to know how to play with it a little bit. Like know when to smile, when to kind of have like a, you know, cock, more cocky or sly smile, and when to when it's a when it's good to release the tension and when to like kind of maintain that tension. And this is a really good point. You just said there when to have a cocky or really sly smile. And for a lot of you out there. That is like, what is a cocky smile? What is a sly smile? You don't, you, maybe you already have one, maybe you don't. You might think you have one and you actually have one that's really nervous or hiding some, some emotional pain. And that's, that's what the women pick up on. And this is why it's so important to have a coach that's good if, if you don't, if you can't see it because the coach, somebody like yeah. Matt will point this stuff out and show you exactly what's going on. Yeah. And those first, I was, let's say this too, the first few seconds, well, really the whole interaction, but the first few seconds of the interaction, especially like you want it to be memorable. You want to create like these emotions. You want her to feel something. If she just feels like, oh, you know, if you went up and gave her a compliment, she's like, oh, that was a nice guy. He gave me a compliment. But it doesn't really like, it doesn't really feel that much for her. Mm-hmm. But if you, you know, create some tension, some anticipation, some drama, it's just like a good movie. Right? We don't like a good. Uh, we don't, you know, we don't like movies that are just like flat. We like them to go up and down in drama. So at first, you kind of want her to like wonder what you're gonna say, mm-hmm. and create some anticipation and some tension. And then you break the tension by maybe complimenting her, for example. And you don't have to. You can do something else. But it's kind of, you know, the emotions are going a little bit up and down. And then, so for you, you probably. I'm sure you know this, but that's where you get the difference in thank yous from girls or the difference in the way they yeah. respond. It's, if there's that thank you, it's like, oh, thank you, though, you know, yeah. or something like that, similar to that, or okay, thank you, that's mm-hmm. kind of a thank you, but like, yeah, but I mean, this is it. Or that was really yeah. sweet. I'm going to get away. And then, yeah, they're gone. Um, and uh, when you nail it, there's a whole different response. And so, um, and that's when compliments actually work. Mm-hmm. because I've seen a lot of guys come to me and they'll say, oh, compliments don't work. I don't compliment girls. I tried that. Mm-hmm. And they always just kind of walk off or they, they, they don't accept them well. And can you talk a little bit about why that is? And what's the difference between like, if you were to deliver a compliment that worked, what does that feel like from a guy that's doing it versus the guy that's, it's not working. Like just a simple, you know? Yeah. Well, it's, it's the difference is this. It's when you're just, Delivering the com the compliment, like you know, just kind of normal without tension or with a little bit of anxiety, she feels like, oh, that was nice, you know, it was a nice guy. Which probably no, it's not really good to be considered the nice guy, quote unquote. It's good to be a nice person, um, but when you create those emotions in her, she feels something because you're feeling something. Um, you know, you're feeling it in your body. You're feeling kind of like a sexual feeling towards her instead of hiding it. When you're speaking really quickly, you're kind of hiding those feelings Mm -hmm. instead of just like internally thinking, okay, I'm really attracted to this girl and like allowing yourself to feel that. I mean, it's not about going up to her and being like, Hey, you're really cute. Yeah. Like that kind of sleazy thing. You don't want to do that. Um, but the opposite of that is like masking it completely, which would be like, Hey, you're really cute. I just want to say hi. hi. No, notice the rushing there. Yeah. Notice that that's, we call that reactive energy. So notice that reactive nervous energy. Yeah. yeah. So when you're just kind of taking your time and just, you know, allowing yourself to feel what is whatever you're feeling. And that's why those pauses are so important, which create the tension, but it allows you to like, just feel it for a second. Like you might say whatever it is you're going to say, like you stop her and say like, hey, hold on a second, or hey, real quick, or whatever, and then just wait like two seconds, and you're just like, you know, you take her in for a second. You just like see her, instead of like thinking of what to say, or like, I want to get this over with as soon as possible. You just allow yourself to just be there, just for two seconds, without saying anything. And then the next thing, whatever, it's maybe, you know, I just saw you in the distance, or something like that. But you're saying it like from a, from a really present grounded state, and it comes off a lot more attractive. 
And that has a lot to do with something you just said. And I want you to kind of, uh, we always say, I always say that you can't seduce a woman into liking you through logic. You're never going to use your logic yeah. or your fancy analytical reasons to get a woman to like you. So you talked about transference of emotions, what you're really talking about. So you're saying yeah. that as you hit that, that tension, there's a, there's a transference of emotion. How important is that? Do you think? The transfer of emotion? Yeah. Yeah, that's like key. I think scientists call it like emotional contagion or using mirror neurons, you know, all those technical terms. Positive inception is another one, emotional yeah. transference. It all yeah, it's all things. kind of the same. And it's really like what you feel inside, like emotionally, is what the other person is going to feel. Or other people can pick up on that. Like when somebody yawns, even across the room, you know, you might be sitting somewhere else, but you, you pick up on it and you, you yawn. Or I saw like a homeless person crying the other day. I felt sad. Maybe not as sad as that person, but I, but I felt sad. Or if somebody came in this room right now, yeah, I'm so happy. Like we don't even know why they're happy, but we'd be like, what? What is it? We start getting happy. So the same thing applies when you're turned on. So if you can allow yourself, and I say allow yourself because I think in society we're told not to do this by whoever, parents, maybe uh, you know, social conditioning. But allow yourself to be turned on by her and appreciate appreciate her femininity and her you so know a little bit of heart a little bit of turn on yeah, yeah exactly and you allow yourself to just to feel that and then it'll just come out in your subtleties again subtleties like your tonality instead of like talking like this like we're talking at this you know this pitch it's like it's a little bit lower it's not something you really can fake even though I'll kind of try to do it now. But instead of like, hey, I just saw you, you're so cute, it might be something like, hey, I just, I just saw you and I just thought you were really cute. I'm totally faking it, obviously, but, but it's good. like something like that, you know, no, um, because I, it just changes. And when it's real, then she can really pick up on that. And the cool thing is when you, when you do it right, she will feel it and you will see her get turned on. You see, you just talked about something really important that you said when it's real. Mm -hmm. So do you have a lot of students, and I've seen this before, but do you, do you have a lot of students that come in to say, okay, I'm going to give her emotion, and then they go out to give her turn on, and they try to, try to, it was a keyword, be turned on versus being turned on. Do you understand the difference what I mean? Mm -hmm. And how do you deal with that? How do you help a student, like, uh, because that's an important thing. you got to get the student past trying, I'm assuming you're saying the same way, right? Mm -hmm. Well, I think it's okay in the beginning to like just go out there first and just like go up to girls and don't worry about doing it perfect and just like run up to them and do the sweet approach, the nice guy approach. Hey, you're really cute. I want to say hi. And just realize that, okay, I'm not getting any, you know, I'm getting pretty good reactions and it just kind of conditions you to do it. So by but pretty good reactions, they're being nice. Yeah. They may not be getting, getting all turned on, but they're getting nice. They're getting nice. And you may not get any numbers. And if you do, they're probably not going to be very solid and stuff like that. We might make some friends and you might get a date here and there just because the fact that it is confident that you did it mm -hmm. and it is so different. Although I just, I was just on the promenade right before this and I was interviewing girls and I asked how many, how often does this happen? And there were two girls from Oslo and they're like, oh, when we're here at the promenade, it happens all the time. And we saw two or three other guys doing it. So it just depends. It's so the next question is how often does it happen? Well, yeah. So it doesn't happen well that often. If you, if you ask girls, I ask girls all, every single girl that I date who I approached in this way during the day, typically I ask them and they say, you know, it never usually happens. Not like that. So, but anyways, digressing. Um, but it's okay to go out there and do that for a while, but eventually you, you really need to work on what we're talking about is just feeling it, feeling it in your body. One way to get there, um, one of our coaches, he would tell guys, like, think of the best sexual experience you ever had, or think of like the best blowjob you ever had, something like that. And when you think about that, you'll see the guys like shift. They're just like, oh yeah. You just see their demeanor, like they get into this more sexual state. And then when they go up approach, it's totally different. Yeah. So I think that's one way to do it. I don't really do that. I just allow myself to feel the attraction for her. Like I've noticed basically the better looking she is, the more like sexy she is, or the more feminine she is, usually the better reaction I get because I'm more, you know, I'm being more real or turned on and she's feeling that. And so you find, so, okay, so now you're walking with this girl, you're accessing your real turn on. 
for her. Mm -hmm. And then you're talking to her from that turn on versus from your head, which is a whole different vibe. And, um, and you have a process for helping some of these guys because we were just talking about it. We were just talking about that process. How do you get in touch with the turn on? But do you ever run into guys that just can't get in touch with their turn on? Like how, and, and it's like, how do you help them get to the point where they can if you do? Yeah. And it's, it's a work, isn't it? It is. It is. Because a lot of times there's a lot of that baggage or those yeah. barriers, whatever they are, that condition them not to do it. But what I find when is... When we hear in our society that it's like, it's bad to be like a sexual guy. It's, it's creepy or it's like it's rapey but, or whatever. And it's, yeah. You know, it's not. No, no, creepy. Well, it's okay. So that was a really good point you just made. There's creepy or it's rapey. What is creepy or rapey if that's not? Because I find it's not. I find a sexual guy who's honest mm-hmm. about it is well received. Yeah. And the creepy rapey guy is somebody else. What, what, what do you think? He's about? usually the guy who is afraid to talk to the girl. He's, he's like the guy at the bar who's like looking at everybody, or looking at the girl lustfully, but doesn't actually share that with her. So he's like eyeballing from the corner. Yeah. He's like, coming up and looking at her from. A few people, a few people away in the mm-hmm. distance. Those will usually say that's creepy. Yeah. Or the guy that does. I've seen the guy that walks up and says something, but he's lusting so bad that it's coming out all weird. It's like instead yeah, of enjoy, just sitting yeah. and enjoying, like I don't lust for a flower. If I look at a flower and think that's beautiful, it's like that's beautiful. I enjoy it. Yeah. Instead of enjoying her, there's a sense of I gotta have you. Yeah. And that's dangerous. Yeah. Once you, once you also have that willingness to walk away where you feel, feel the desire for her, but at the same time, you don't need anything from her. You just want to tell her, you just want to communicate that to her. And if she doesn't receive it well, that's okay. That's okay. You, you, you're okay with that. You're, you're willing to, you know, fail in yeah. a sense. And not that it's failing, but maybe she's just not into that, in that headspace and she just can't take that kind of interaction that happens sometimes. So there's that, there's that, and this is, I think, a really important factor you just brought up too, which is, this is why I like the way he teaches is, uh, uh, we call it indifference to outcome. Do you have a term for it? Um, I like that indifference outcome. Yeah. Uh, just Versus indifference. Indifference to outcome. Right. And, uh, and we, I, we just call it, I like outcome, like not outcome dependent. Yeah. So same idea. Yeah. yeah. And, um, and there's a, uh, there's a teacher out there that teach, used to teach releasing, he's passed away, which is the process of letting go of emotions inside me. Mm-hmm. The term he used recently that I saw was he says, you want to get to this hoopless place? Is that like, he would say hoopless. And I thought, oh, that's kind of a funnier way to say it. It's not so analytical. Uh-huh. And this place where you just don't give a damn whether it works or doesn't work. Yeah. And what I, and there's that sense of, of once you're indifferent to outcome or outcome not dependent, you can, if you fail or not, it doesn't matter. So I can just be who I want to be. If I want to be turned on, I'll be turned on. Mm-hmm. If I lose interest, okay, I move on. If she loses interest, we move on. And there's a power in that, isn't there? Yes. Yeah. And, and it's also you learning from those, those situations where it didn't work out. Because sometimes, nine out of ten times, it has nothing to do with the guy. It's just the girl is having a bad day. Or she got approached by some other creepy guys or whatever. Or... You know, she, she, yeah, she got fired from her job or something like that. It's nothing to do with you, but I see all the time that guys take it personally, and it doesn't even make sense. The, the, she's not even like mad at the guy, or it has nothing to do with him. But at the same time, if you did something that could have triggered a less than favorable response, you should learn from it. Like one time, I approached a girl from behind just to try that, and the girl screamed. And if you did that, if you know, you learn from that, you say, okay, let's not do it that way. Yeah. So you don't want to be so m- much thinking like, oh, you know, it's never me. It's always them. Learn from it for a second. Say, hmm, is there anything that I could have done to trigger that if it was like a negative response, which you almost will never get when you're actually tur- like doing what we're saying, grounded, present, turned on. But, you know, allow yourself to say, hmm, is there anything I can learn from that? You can't think of anything, and it probably has, probably has nothing to do with the way you approach. Probably she's just not in that type of headspace. A lot of times it's timing. Timing, yeah. Have you ever had the experience, and then this proves timing, if you ever had the experience, and I, I would bet you have, but let's find out, is uh, you approach a girl, it doesn't quite work, something happens, she rejects you, whatever, and then you approach the same girl later, or another time, or a different time, and boom, it lights right up. Mm-hmm. And it's all on and it's like same guy same girl timing so. you yeah. she's in a different emotional space that's why with texting too I get so many questions about texting and like guys get so hung up when the girl like doesn't text back it's like you don't know what emotional space she's in she could totally be into you 
she's in a bad mood or whatever, whatever type of mood at that moment where she just doesn't want to text you, don't take it personally. She's driving, somebody's yelling at her, she's in a fight, she's, there's a yeah. million reasons, yeah. literally a million reasons that have nothing to do with the guy, but all the time guys take it personally. Yeah. Why? My it's just, personal opinion, and, and it, it, learning to be good with rent women is really about learning to be in different outcomes. Because the more different outcome you are, or outcome not dependent mm-hmm. uh, in life, I think just plain happier you are. That it's it's the key to happiness. Yeah, and if you can sure. develop that with money, with women, with business, with your girlfriend, oh my God, it'll change every part of your life. Yeah, I think all, all pretty much all personal de- anybody personal development says the same thing. Or if you just study yeah. successful people, I highly recommend like read biographies of successful people, whether they're successful in money, relationships, or like Gandhi or somebody like that. Like read their biography, and they, they're always they always you know there are always situations where there were you know there was trouble or there was you know, difficult times, and they overcame that. It's the same thing. Like you know, you know yeah, you're you're not going to have every approach go perfect. Sometimes I mean, even us, we get rejected or whatever you want to call it. The difference is we laugh about it and tell each other stories and think it's cool. And yeah, that a lot, and, but we didn't used to. I mean, I didn't used to. I'm sure you didn't used to. Yeah. Oh, there's definitely times where I've taken it personally. Even recently, there's, there's some times where I'm just like, what the heck? But then I have to ground myself and say, and go through that process. Like, okay, wait, probably, you know, I didn't do anything wrong. You know, she must just be in a bad mood. I'm not going to let that affect me. Okay, let's move on. It's, it's usually when you're really enjoying something. That's when it's going to get you. Like, there's yeah. something, this song's really cool about this girl. Something weird happens in that moment, screws everything up. And then you're like, it sucks. But it happens. It happens. And I, I personally believe the faster you let that girl go, or the faster you let that money go, or that situation go, or whatever it is, the quicker something better comes in the door. And I don't know if you've had yeah. that experience, but you let it go, and it's just like, wow, look what just showed up. And if you're hanging on to it at all, I find that it, it, it makes that process last longer for something that comes in the dark. Yeah, that's true. And I know you're good at letting go of, because, I mean, you've traveled the world and so you're obviously good at just, like you pick up and go, but very few attachments, right? Mm-hmm. And and uh, I think that's a huge key. That's not, that, that's probably largely why you're so successful. Mm-hmm. It's free. Yeah. But a lot of guys are attached to, you know, either the ex-girlfriend or even just some girl that they have like a massive crush on from high school or whenever it is. And it's never really, it's never going to happen. They know that they just have that attachment. I have so many guys like that. I'm just like, move on, man. When they show up, how many guys do you have to show up? And if you're, if you're this guy, you're going to know how many guys do you have to show up that uh, come in the door with that? Like, okay, I got this girl and this day one. I got this girl. How, you know, how do I get her? How do I get her back? How do I win her over? How do I get out of the friend zone? Mm-hmm. This is like one of the most common questions. Oh, yeah. yeah, we do. I do uh, weekly coaching calls for, mm-hmm. for like an ongoing program we have called the Academy. And always, like every call, especially new guys, yeah, like you said, new guys always come in with like this attachment yeah. to somebody. Yeah. And those guys are interesting to me because I know how successful a student's going to be by, or how quickly, let's put it that way, because I've seen students become, that, you know, I thought were going to be difficult, become amazing and successful mm-hmm. students. But how quickly, really based on how quickly they get over focusing on that girl in the beginning stages, mm-hmm. they they hold on to it a lot. They keep going back to it. I know it's going to be a long, a long road. Uh, and so one of the pieces of advice I always give them is get good with other women. Be a saw where you could meet other women and then go back and talk to her and see what happens. Mm-hmm. But don't focus on her because you got too much baggage there. And when they can't do that, when it's all about her, we got some work to do. Yeah. Yeah. That's good advice. Yeah. It's, 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 to me, it's huge. Um, so let's talk specifically about, uh, I mean, you're really a master of digging and you've gotten phenomenal at it. You've met probably how many girls, I mean, you've probably met more girls than you can count during the day. It's a lot. In pretty much every country. Try to count, like figure out like the, the rate, you know, like, okay, I'm going out 365 days, not going out 365 days, but in a year, how many am I approaching? It's like ridiculous. Yeah. It's like in the, almost probably 10,000 or something. How many countries have you done this in? Uh, I've been to a lot of countries. He's been to more. We've, so. we've done actual workshops in 40 countries. 
Yeah, that's impressive. And some of them were like, we took guys and traveled to country. Some of them we just did a workshop in the country. Yeah. And personally, I've been to about 74 countries. My goal is 100. 74 so countries. I'm kind of freaked out right now. countries are they? Like 200 almost. <laughs> like 190. <laughs> so those. It changes all the time. Um, so a guy, so you talk talking about a guy that can't count how many girls he's approached. He's in 74 countries and done workshops in 40 countries. So what is some advice? Like what's some practical advice we can give some clients to get them started on improving their day game skills and to really go out just some, something simple. We talked a little bit about, we alluded to it, you know, being calm, being slow, playing yeah. attention. So what, you know, well, we're to break it down. When it comes to just starting out, you don't want to think about those things too much. I think in the very beginning, um, you want to you want to get to that place as quickly as possible, where you can be having approaches where you're really authentic. In that sense, um, starting off, I, you, depending on where the guy's at, but if he has a lot of approach anxiety, I say do something simple, like just walk up to girls and just ask them for directions, or make a comment about something they're doing or something they're wearing. Just keep it really simple because the problem is guys go out there and they want to do this awesome, amazing approach. And so it just, it, they have too much anxiety because of that. Instead, you, you want to take all that pressure away and just try to do something simple first. And then you say, okay, I just did five approaches where I just asked for directions and that was it. I said, have a great day. Then you're like, okay, now you feel, feel better. You feel good. You just accomplished a small goal. So then you say, okay, let's make it a, a bigger goal. So just do the same thing, but add on a little compliment or something and say, Hey, do you know where Starbucks is? She says, whatever. I say, actually, I just thought you're really pretty. Have a great day. Like end it. Then add a little bit more once that becomes easy. That's called progressive desensitization. That works really well. It does. And then uh, that with just getting present, like just focusing on your breathing, you know, feeling your body, feeling your feet on the ground and just feeling relaxed. You know, when all that tension is like in your, in your head or, you know, your, your heart is beating when you're about to approach that girl, if you can just kind of like relax and ground yourself, that like eliminates that anxiety, that fear. So do you find, let's say you take the average guy who's scared to approach girls. Do you find how, how much of that do you think he needs to do? And I gotta say this because a lot of guys out there are sitting there thinking, oh, if I do five of those, I should be ready to do five of this, and five of that. And, and in some cases, it could be a little different. So do you think, what's a realistic number on average for a guy? What if you just go at your own pace, whatever it is? I mean, it doesn't matter if the first day all you do is asking for directions, you know, 10 times, 20 times, whatever it is, it's fine. And then the next day, maybe you do the same thing for, for you know, a couple of days. But as long as you're progressing. Okay. Um, so, so it could take, I mean, I don't know, 10 times asking for directions. For some guys, it's like three times and they're like, Okay, that's boring. that's boring. And some guys, it, it, it takes a And the reason I say this is because you've encountered that student where it takes a lot. He's so scared that it might take multiple days of doing super mm -hmm. simple stuff before he finally starts to be able to relax. And I want the guys out there that are experiencing that to know that's normal. Yeah, that's okay. Yeah. That's okay. Okay. And then, so, so he's starting to approach. He's getting better at it. Uh, let's say he's starting to say you're really cute and run away. So what's, where do you go from there? How can you step into it a little bit more so you get a conversation going? So that's the next thing I get asked a lot. It's a super common question you get it too. How do you keep it going? How do I keep, keep it going? Keep it going? Yeah. So starting off, just like ask her some questions about herself. I mean, this is what I recommend, you know, get her talking about herself a little bit. Um, you can ask questions, like, you know, like, where you're from and you know, what are you up to today? These are actually decent questions because they give you some logistical information. Like what is she doing? If she's in a huge hurry, you might want to keep it. This is a really important point because I've watched it. You, you have a really good video about not chasing a girl where you, you bring up this point, right? Pretty much the point of the video is not chasing and that, but, but, that, but asking her, no, that's a, that's a different point actually. Mm -hmm. But you use in that video, you use very simple questions. Mm -hmm. very common questions, questions that most dating coaches would tell you not to ask. And well, it has to, yeah, and that's because the conversation has to logically make sense. Yeah. It has to logically make sense from, like, one thing to the next, but the but it, sh it should be emotional. So logically, like, the where you go from A, B, and C or whatever mm -hmm. should be, should make sense. But the underlining 
uh, whatever word it is, I don't know, the, the context. The content, there it is. The content should be emotional, but the context should make sense, right? It should start off, it makes sense to run up to a girl in the middle of the day and say she's pretty, right? That, that actually makes sense to do, but if you run after a girl, you're like, hey, stop, I just had to stop you because you have such great shoes, and they're just like, normal shoes, she knows you're bullshit. So that's what I mean, it has to make sense. But the point I'm trying to make here is that you say, and I agree with you actually, is that you're asking boring questions. Mm -hmm. What most guys would say, oh, that's a boring question. You gotta come up with something creative. You gotta dazzle her. You gotta get her like interested right away. You know, that's where that whole lies more men and women bullshit comes from, right? Mm -hmm. And and even that can work if the underlying tones are, are, are proper. You know, like if you got the underlying emotions, right? So, um, so you're saying that you can say simple questions and get a girl interested. And I want guys to hear what you think about that versus like this average pickup coach is, is given out 50 million clever lines to say to get a yeah. girl pulled in. Why, why is that? Why is that different? So we're kind of, I think this, this point needs to be illustrated as you're getting into conversation. Yeah. A lot of women can see, they, they know it's a line, you know, mm -hmm. they can just, they can sense it. Mm -hmm. Women are very sensitive to those kind of things. Um, so when you just keep it kind of simple, especially now with, you know, the game and, and things like that being so, so much more mainstream and just it's so widespread now, women are more in tune with whether this is like pickup artist, meaning he's using, not that that's a bad thing, but it has the connotation that he uses pickup lines and routines and it's kind of fake. It's right. not sincere. So you want it to be sincere. You don't want her to think that he's just... Running that's the lines. Point right there. So keep it. So when you keep it simple, yeah. she's gonna think it's sincere. I mean, she's gonna think it's you know that you're. It's not like this. Thing you have to actually be well, sincere. You can't be fake yeah. and sincere, which is the problem that a lot of guys have. Is they come in and they try to fake sincere. Yeah. And so you're talking about, and this is what I see you do so well in your videos, is you convey real emotion and real sincerity mm -hmm. when you ask a simple question, then it works. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, that's you that's, and that's what you, that's that's interesting. Like, just convey your own emotion. It's literally just being who you are. Like the old thing, be yourself. But most guys are not themselves. They're themselves when they're having this conversation with their their friends. They're being relaxed and and they're being you know they're going in different emotional states and laughing and then you know whatever. But when they're with a woman, they don't know. They're not being that. Not being so what's getting them to yeah, yeah that's exactly it's the, it's the nerves. It's so what is it? it's the nerves? It's the fight or flight response yeah. that that comes up that tells them you shouldn't be doing this. You might die, <laughs> but you know you're not going to die. But your, your ego doesn't know that. You're, yeah, you know, your nervous system is still trying to get to protect itself. But going back to like the conversation, you can yeah you can ask those questions, the simple questions, to find out kind of what she's up to and things like that. But ultimately, you know, why are you approaching her? Approaching her because she's pretty, she's, you're attracted to her, but do you know if you want to date her yet? So this do goes you, down to the chasing kind of thing. Yeah. Okay. So do you know, you don't know anything about her. That's the point I'm trying to make. You don't know anything about her, so you want to find out about her. Find out if she's somebody you actually want to get her phone number. Find out if you actually want her phone number. Find out if you want to potentially go on a date. And, and Matt has a really good video uh, uh, about chasing. What was the title of that video? I think it's just how to get her to chase you. How to get her to chase you. And it's a good video because he uses this simple questioning, this, this simple line, simple, not line, but simple way of stating stuff mm -hmm. to get a, a woman to chase you. Mm -hmm. And so many guys are scared of that. So many guys yeah. are scared to put the ball in her court and sit back. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. A lot of times if I, if, yeah, when I'm teaching them to do this, and it's not about using this specific line. It's like, use whatever question you want to ask her, whatever you want to find out about her. Like, what are your standards? You know, know what you're looking for in a woman. It can be specific or it can be kind of general. It's up to you. Um, but then ask her that question. But if it comes off as like, you know, tell me something interesting about you. That doesn't, sh that doesn't show that I have standards. It's, that self-communicates, I really want to get to know you. Mm -hmm. But at this point in the interaction... I want to see, I'm kind of judging her a little bit because I don't know anything about her, right? Mm -hmm. we, we do that. As people, we judge each other. It's okay. It's just the way it is. So I'm judging her a little bit to see if she meets my standards. I'm not going to go through like all the criteria I'm looking for, for for a girlfriend. That would take way too long. That's what dates for. We're dating. 
it's for. But I want to see, like, is there anything about her? Is there, you know, is there anything cool about her? And do you find that there's ever a time, and, and this may not be true, I mean, you may use this all the time just to see if she's interested in you, because mm-hmm. I would imagine if the girl's not interested, then it's, it's probably going to die out pretty quick from there, but if she's interested, it could take off really quick from there. Mm-hmm. So do you ever find that you're kind of calibrating for the right time to ask that question? Or do you act like I can feel this certain level, like, like this is this is the point I'm always trying to convey, and I and, and I, I think you can even talk on this topic as we talk about it. When you look in her eyes and you're talking to her voice tone, there's that sense of something happening. There's that sense of a bubble or a sense of a connection or a sense of a curiosity that gets conveyed. Mm-hmm. Do you wait for that to, before you ask the question, or do you just pump it out? You can. Def- it depends on the situation. So if it's daytime, sometimes it's a really quick interaction. So you don't really have time to wait for things like that. You just have to kind of like, you know, okay, I'm attracted to you. Communicate that. That's the reason I'm talking to you. But I don't know anything about you. So let's see if there's anything about you. And if there is, then let's exchange numbers and have a date later. Oftentimes that's the case during the, during the daytime. Um, but yeah, in a longer interaction, you know, yeah, you can you can kind of sense that from her and. There's no, there's no rule, really. I don't mm-hmm. think. You know, you well, can, I can see it working both ways. That's why I asked the question. Yeah. What do you do? Uh, because let's say she's not interested, and you ask that question. That could be the question that gets her interested. Or yeah. That could be the thing that lets you know she's not interested. So let's move on and not waste my time. Yeah. She could be so not interested because she has a boyfriend or something like that, mm-hmm. or just whatever. You're just not a type, and so that kind of tells you because she's just like, ugh, I don't know. And she gives you some stupid answer. And mm-hmm. It just dies. That's okay. Sometimes that happens. Other times she's not really that interested, uh, but you ask a question like that, that shows her that you're a challenge. It does so much because by showing her that you're a challenge, that you have standards, that, okay, it's not just because you're pretty, I want to find out who you are on the inside to see if there's anything going on there. That can be so like different for her. She's really beautiful. She's so used to guys like, you know, telling her how beautiful she is or giving her whatever she wants because she's beautiful. And here you are approaching her and you're challenged. You're like, I don't know about you yet. You know, it's that energy. You don't have to say that, but it's that energy. It's like, you haven't met my standards yet. You know, you're making her work for you. So that can really get her, again, chasing or just get her interested in you. And I agree with that. When you do that right. When you do it right. Meaning it has to have the right tonality. It has to be, it has to be real. So let's come back to that because that's kind of where we started. When you do it right. So right implies, because you'll see those guys, you, you might be one of those guys where you come up and there's a ton of nervous tension running. There's a ton of anxiety. You can barely look a girl in the eyes. You can, the thought of walking over and talking to a girl is terrifying. Mm-hmm. And if you get a guy like that, this might not be the right time to ask that question yet. We have to go mm-hmm. back to that whole idea of desensitization first, right? You have to get comfortable or get to a certain point where you're relaxed enough in your body to, to be able to ask that question, at least the semi-relaxed way. Would you yes. Agree? yes, because it's, I mean, you still ask that question, you know, when you're nervous and things like that, but it's just not going to have the effect. No. It's not, it's going to come off as I just like you a lot or I'm nervous, you know, like, you know, it's a screening question. So it could be like, you know, tell me something interesting about you. It could be, is one example. There's a hundred ways to, to do it. That's just one example. So, so let's play with this for a sec, because you just said something really important. Tell me something interesting about you. Yeah. So it could be. So um, tell me. So tell me something interesting about you. Yeah. And do you feel the neediness? That's the whole point. That's that's the power of it, or the power of it. Not. And that actually wasn't that bad. So that you can still most guys. It's like big smile. Like, tell me something interesting about you. Just releasing all the tension. And this is a tense moment because you're 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 judging her in this moment. I know that's not, not a good word to use because it has bad, you know, negative connotations, but you're, you're screening her. You're not sure about her yet. So by smiling and releasing all that tension, think of a job interview, right? Who has more power in, the, in a typical job interview, right? Well, you know, the person who owns the company and he's hiring, you know, a secretary or something like that, you know, she's going to be sitting like this, like, oh, you know, I really want this position. Let me tell you all about me and impress you. Whereas the guy who owns the company or the person interviewing is just like sitting back like this, judging basically or screening. So you kind of want that energy just for a few seconds, not too long. You don't want to do it too long or it's just, you know, it's, it's kind of a dick yeah. kind of being too judgmental. But at this point, like 
like in the beginning, we talked about the emotions going up and down. In the beginning, you're you're telling her you're attracted to her if you if you approach direct, um, which I usually do. So you're giving her these emotions like, hey, I, you know, I'm attracted to you. I like you. And then a few seconds later, or wherever it is in the interaction, but I generally do it pretty quickly. It's like, well, I'm not sure about you yet. I don't know anything about you. Notice I'm leaning back now. You know, you can even cross your arms at this point, which, I mean, be careful with that. But that's typically bad body language, but if you did it for five seconds, like, I don't know anything about you. Tell me one cool thing about you. And then I got to go. You know, something like that will work. So what I'm noticing is you're not only just leaning back, you're leaning back, but you're actually leaning back and feeling your body. Like, you're, you're aware of your whole body leaning back. Mm -hmm. Because I can see somebody leaning back and still being kind of reaching with their eyes, you know, and you're actually like really taking some time and, and creating some space and saying, I'm not sure. Yeah. And and then enjoying that moment before you say it. Yeah. And that's, that's, that. that's that real key. And I think that's the key that you, you nail so well in your videos. Yeah. You're, you're hoping that she's going to answer this question. You're, you're, you're bringing her up to a, a higher standard, really. Mm -hmm. Instead of just saying like, Hey, I like you just because of your looks, having some small talk and then getting her phone number because of her looks. Yeah. You're saying, I'm sure there's, it's not even judging. It's more of just like, I'm sure there's something awesome about you. I want to know what that is. Like you're bringing her up to that, that standard. You should have all, everybody in your life. You of know? course you should. Yeah. yeah. Zan talks about that. Um, you know, Zan, of course. Mm -hmm. And Zan talks about the difference between walk. Most guys are walking up to girls and in their subconscious mind or in the back of their mind, they're thinking, I hope she likes me. Oh, what does she think yeah. of that? Oh, did she like the way I did that? Did she like, oh, she looked away for a second. Why is she looking away? And that's the kind of the, what's going on in their head. And when you hear that, just saying it, you, you almost can't say that in a common way. It's just like this, yeah. this fear versus, and the other way he says is what a man does is a man looks at her and says, do I like her? Mm -hmm. What do I like about her? Oh, that's interesting. What else do I like about her? And he's taking that time, which I believe personally, and you tell me, that's a gift to her. Whereas the other one is trying to take from her. That first one where you think I'm trying to impress her is me actually not giving her anything about it. Like I'm saying, I want you to get to know me, but I'm not going to let you get to know me. I'm going to try to lie and impress you. Mm -hmm. Versus sitting back and saying, now nah, this is who I really am. Mm -hmm. Do you like it? If you like it, great. I like, I'm deciding if I like you. Let's get us be real with each other. I think that's a huge gift. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. And it's, it's such a gift to her because she gets to talk about like her. She gets to win you over versus, you know, she walks up to you and she already won you over. Yeah. Like, where's the fun in that? <laughs> there <know>? is not. <laughs> things are given to us too easily. We don't appreciate well, it. I mean, the you know, it's like the person who wins the lottery, a million dollars and said a million dollars versus the person who built their business and earned a million dollars. Like they're going to appreciate it so much more. They had to work for, Five, 10 years to get that. It's the same thing. You want, she wants to win you over. Yeah. So it's a gift. And I imagine, you know, I always picture hot girls and I watch them, I talk to them and, and we have a lot of girls that work for us and it's the same. And when you ask them, you know, the amount of guys that either directly or indirectly or just hanging out in the distance that are trying to wait to get them to like them, that are waiting to like them. You know, that one guy walks in the door, he says, no, I'm going to sit back. Yeah, I'll, I'll be attractive, but I'm not, you know, I'm going to be attractive. That's really the key. I'm not going to be attractive. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to sit back and be a man about it. And I'm indifferent. You can like me or not. I'm not going to change who I am. It's a whole different guy. Mm -hmm. How many guys are actually like that walking around the street? Not that many. Yeah. It's not. That's the unfortunate thing is it's almost like a lost art to masculinity. It's a lost art. They want validation from women. Yeah. It's crazy. Craving. And unfortunately, there's a lot of women that are craving for men. And I, I feel bad for women because they get it too easily from them. They're craving it, they get it. So they never have to. It's almost like they can go out every day and get on tender and get 50 matches and then just get their validation hit. And mm -hmm. it doesn't give them the opportunity to ever get over it. Yeah. It's, it's scary because they don't get it. They don't have a chance to get over it. That's why this is so great, what we're talking about, because it's not tender. It's actually going out to the real world doing what most guys wouldn't do. Most guys, they're going to take the easy route, which is online or at a bar where it just seems normal. And 
Mm-hmm. You know, it's the standard way to meet women. Well, let's talk about this. The result of this is, is really huge. And this is where I want you guys to understand that if you start to get your subcommunication, who you're being before you move down, what's the result of this? I mean, and, and in a lot of ways, it's, it's very powerful. Like, what happens with the type of women you meet? What happens with your lifestyle? What happens with your, your life in general from your experience? I mean, the sky's the limit. Like all, yeah. I mean, you can pretty much design the kind of life you want. I mean, you can literally have so many women in your life because it's not about just like attracting. For some guys, it's all about like attracting, getting dates, and just like you know, just like whatever, finding a hot girlfriend. For me, it's also it's more about like having a lot of women in my life now because like we were talking about the traveling. I'm not traveling as much anymore now. I finally am in one place. So I'm not just always thinking like, okay, I got to approach this girl to sleep with her or to date her mm-hmm. or whatever, to make her my girlfriend. I'm thinking, you know, she could also be just an awesome friend and she might bring me a lot, a lot more girls. Mm-hmm. Sometimes it's better to have a great female friend who's also attractive. And how many of those girls end up rooting for you? Like, yeah, yeah. they want to bring you girls because you're a cool dude. Yeah. So in, even in these, like, let's say daytime approaches or, or nighttime, it doesn't matter, but like if it, if, if, uh, you know, she has a boyfriend or it's just, it's not going, you know, it's just, you don't, you don't have that chemistry. Sometimes you might like each other and whatever, but there's just not that certain chemistry. Like it's great to have female friends. Mm -hmm. I mean, you can have, yeah, you can literally have girls bringing you girls. They know the type that you want. They're literally like meeting girls for you or bringing you their friends. And And I know for a fact that's how it has in his life, by the way. Um, and so the lifestyle doesn't just extend to girls, but I mean, well, first off, it extends to girls in that sense, but it also extends to girls. Let's talk about the guy who wants to meet a girlfriend. Mm-hmm. Uh, as he gets more different to outcome, more solid, he's being, his being, this shifts. What kind of women does he draw? Oh, just higher quality. I mean, and it's not just about the looks. It's also like when that guy reaches that level, he's looking for, you know, just a woman who meets his standards and he realizes that it's not all about looks. That personality is so important and he starts having boundaries and standards and, and those kind of women, he just starts attracting those kind of women. And that's how you, that's where you meet like the, you know, the quote unquote woman of your dreams, somebody who's so compatible with you because you have, you know, you have boundaries, you have things that you won't tolerate no matter what, no matter how beautiful the girl is. So you do find it's true that you draw what you are. That you draw what you are? Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Yeah, absolutely. You have to be that person first. So if you, if you guys really want that solid, confident, giving, loving woman, well, there you go. You have to be that. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, and so you've seen that person. So you just keep, I mean, for me, it's just keep working on myself, whatever it is. Not just dating, but all aspects of my life. So would you say that, that getting your being in samples, which you're very, you're very good at, has helped you not only to get women, but has created your lifestyle? And yeah. Yeah. Because absolutely. Because I started just going for what I want. Mm-hmm. So with women, I was going for what I wanted. Whereas before I was, I wasn't, but then that tr- started to transpire in other parts of my life where I'm like, okay, I want to travel. Well, how can I make that happen? It seemed so unrealistic at the time. You know, I didn't have much money and, but I made that happen. And then seven and then, more countries later. Yeah. And now it's like, okay, I'm tired of that. What's the next chapter? Yeah. You know, but all these things that we're talking about, they, they relate to every part of your life, you know, your job, career, finances, health. It's, it's really about going for what you want because we're, we're kind of like conditioned in our society to play it safe, Mm -hmm. to be safe. Like approaching a beautiful woman is out of your comfort zone. It's not, it's getting out of your box. So, and everything you want in life isn't in your box or you would have it, your comfort zone, yeah. right? So everything you want, whether it's a million dollars, the car, whatever, beautiful wife, it's all out here. It's all out of your comfort zone. So you have to expand it. Yeah. And you so, remind me of Richard Branson when you talk about that. Because Richard Branson, he's a great autobiography, if you read it. Yeah. He's my virginity. And in that book, he... He, his parents, if you really read his upbringing, fascinated me because his parents taught him to do, to constantly go outside the box, mm-hmm. take risks, push it, push it, push it. And I think that's largely why he's a billionaire today. Oh, sure. And, uh, there's no doubt about it. Yeah. See, you know, he's a little child and they're, and they're teaching them at 
five years old, push it. Ten years old, push it. Go for it. And that's so uncommon. I mean, even my parents, they taught me, you know, go to college, get the, get the safe job. I was playing in bands back then. Um, when I first came out to LA and my mom hated it. Like she would, you know, always ask me like, when are you going to get a job and all this stuff? Because it's not the norm. It was out, it's outside of that. It's risky. Yeah. There's a chance that I'd fail and be a starving artist. The rest of my life. And then I transitioned to something else, but where most people are not taught to get out of their comfort zone. We're taught to, especially in today's society, we don't have to hunt for food and we don't even have to leave our house to get food anymore. It's a bigger fire. Anything. Like, we don't even have to leave our house to go meet women. There's Tinder and things like that. It's great. It makes things more convenient, but we don't want to lose that aspect of getting out of our comfort zone. It's, it's so like a lost art. So I'm curious, what does your mom say today? Well, she's happy. <laughs> I, well, I don't know. I'm sure she'd be happier if I lived in the United States instead of on the other side of the world. But yeah, but, yeah, yeah. but, you're, but you're, you're, you're not struggling anymore. That's important. Yeah. Yeah. And so there's a mentor of mine, he, um, a financial mentor, and he always said, he called it the curse of the middle class. The middle mm-hmm. class values comfort and security so much, mm-hmm. and they get taught it growing up so much that they're miserable. Mm-hmm. Because now there's there's no tension, they're, not, they're not pushing their tension boundaries, and they get all their tension from what a movie, watching sports on TV, mm-hmm. and then they go back to their cubicle. Yep. And uh, and yeah, yeah go ahead. a lot. Of, I can say about that too. Uh, well, the, yeah, the, a lot of times they're living somebody else's values. What's really important, like to get to that level of man that we're talking about, is to figure out and know what your values are. Yeah. Um, and what I mean by that is like, for example, when I first came to uh, California, like I was playing in the band, I knew that was a value, obviously, but I came here doing computer science because I didn't know somebody else put that value on me. And I wasn't interested in it, but I did it because that's what I was told to do. And we're told to have the nice job and, and things like that because, but it may not be a value. It could be a value. If it is, that's great. Then you're doing the right thing. But if it's not, then you're living somebody else's values. And we hear different things all the time. You know, somebody comes in and says, hey, you should get into real estate, and that's their value. And we think it's good without actually realizing, wait, does this align with our values? And we're never truly happy because we're doing what everybody else says we're supposed to do instead of saying, hey, these are my top three values. I'm only going to do things that are aligned with these things, and everything else I'm either going to delegate or, you know, sometimes we have to do things we don't want to do, of course, in life. But the majority of our time should be spent with things we, we love that we so what uh, this is this is an interesting question uh one i always ponder and uh i've done a lot of thinking about is you, do you get that student who has no clue what his values is oh yeah like, he just can't i have no idea what do you do with that student sometimes you've got to just sit them down and find out what they're passionate about sometimes they don't know but you got to dig deeper and ask certain questions like what would you do you know what do you spend all your time doing what makes you happy what would you do if you know you, you weren't making money doing it and you'd still be happy? Hopefully they can answer some of these questions and, and get an idea. And if they don't still, then I usually recommend just try different things. Like yeah. go out there, like travel if you can. Or if you can't, if you just don't have any money, then do things like do a class or do rock climbing, you know, take a acting class or take a public speaking class or take a whatever, go on, on meetup.com and just see what what well, seems interesting and just try a bunch of different things to find out what you like. Cause some people just have no idea what they like. And so, you know, and how essential if we relate this back, figuring this out, it's the very thing you just talked about. Cause I think it's essential too. How essential is that getting back to them meeting women, getting back to their dating life? Well, then you have a sense of who you are mm-hmm. and you have a sense of what's important to you. Again, your values. And then you can, you can see if the woman's values aligns with your values. Cause if, if your values are, you know, whatever, traveling, for example, let's say that's one of your most important values, and hers is having uh, a home and, you know, doing like the, you know, the Susie Homemaker thing and not traveling, that's not going to work out, at least for being a girlfriend. Yeah. So once you know your values and you have, you know, your passions and things like that, then you can see if she meets, and so the see, guy, if they, see if they're a fit. And so I'm picturing back to when I didn't know my values and I'm picturing guys that don't know their values at all. And they're going to try to be women and how difficult that job is because, you know, my, I go to my cubicle every day. It's a good job. It gives me retirement. I watch sports because it distracts me. 
you know, I'm not necessarily in love with it, but it's, I can yell and scream at the game and drink a few beers and mm-hmm. it distracts me. I go to the movies on occasion, um, like to go to the beach, but it's all, but there's no sense of, they're on autopilot. Almost. Yeah. And then they go up to me and a girl, what do you like to do? I like to watch sports. I like to, and it's a whole different, there's no passion. In it. Yeah. There's no drive. In it. There's no emotion in it, no investment in it. Right. Yeah. How can you expect her to get excited about you if you're not even excited about you? Yeah, if you're not excited about your life, what you're doing. Yeah. It's not about bragging, but it's just like it's true. Being Absolutely. happy. Yeah, there's a the yeah, very true. first self improvement book I read called a book called Feeling Good by a guy named Burns just so long ago. Mm-hmm. He said I remember the only thing I really remember about that book was the um, the main thing I remember was he said, If you're not willing to take yourself out to a fine dress up and to go to a nice dinner by yourself, then why should a woman go out with you? Yeah, and it's a good exercise. I immediately did it. I was like, yeah. Yeah. and I was like, now it's like no big deal. I can do yeah. it. I'll, I'll do it every day. Back then, I'm like, oh, it's people looking at me, you know. And it's it's a tricky, yeah. And, and it's weird to think I lived in that box and being, and that's like being comfortable with yourself, like mm-hmm. being comfortable alone. A lot of women have trouble with that, but guys do too. Yeah, and just like being able to go to a movie by yourself and just like you know. Say, so yeah, I'm having a great time because I'm with my favorite person in the world. Yeah. If you can't like yourself, if you don't love yourself, how is she supposed to love you or like and, you? And so that goes back the other way. If you actually, truly, not faking it, love yourself and you walk in the room, how do people react to you? How do you think people would react to you? And mm-hmm. from your experience, what does that do for a guy who's trying to meet a girl? Well, it, comes, it kind of comes back to all the subtleties. Yeah. It, you can't really fake those subtleties. You come walk into the room and you just know who you are and you love who you are and you accept all your shortcomings because we all have shortcomings. I mean, it just, it's an energy. I mean, you can just feel it. Yeah. It's confidence. I mean, it is. Confidence. And I've seen guys like one of my best friends is five foot three and he's bald and he gets the hottest girls like I've ever seen. And he's really successful. But before he was successful, he was before he was famous. He had that thing, and he was he would get supermodels, and it's because he knew who he was. He didn't let those those beliefs that society says, and a lot of women will say too, affect him. He said, "Well, I can't change who I am. I'm gonna accept it, and they're either gonna like it or not. Mm-hmm. A lot of times they like it. I see him approach. He likes hot uh, blondes or tall blondes." Mm-hmm. And hot, of course. They always like them tall. And he all like he just approaches like the six foot blondes, like boom, 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 and and they're just like, whoa! I can't. Like you can see the girls, like remember this guy's approaching me, you know? And they, he must be somebody. He must be, you know. I have a he's, he's got confidence, yeah. and he's super short, sure. and he loves women. And he said one of my hottest things, like I approach a tall woman, or I, I, I date, I take a tall woman on a date, and then I have to stand on, like a box to kiss her. He's like, it's so hot, it turns me That's on so, so much, and I'm like. We yeah, have like tall girls. <laughs> you know, like sure, too. yeah. <laughs> that's but, but that's his thing, you know, and it's it's hilarious, and he owns it, mm-hmm. you know. So what other choice does he have, right? Wear stilts all day. Yeah, you know, well, most guys wouldn't do that. Most guys would feel sorry for themselves. Yeah, that's true. Live their whole life that way and not have good results. Yeah. You're gonna feel sorry for yourself. So mm-hmm. you got to own who you are and accept the faults and the things that you can fix. Fix them. Yeah. You know, things you can't accept it. So what I'm going to recommend to guys, hold on one sec, check this, cut this out. So I get six forty five. So I'm um, sit back down. So what I'm going to recommend to you guys is that you go to Artisan's website, the Attractive Man dot com, mm-hmm. and and check out some of his videos. He's got a lot of great infield footage, and uh, definitely check out that one video I referred to. What was the title of it? I think it's How to Get Her to Chase You. Yeah, it's a, and it's a longer video, right? It's a little bit longer, about fifteen minutes. Yeah. Or so. And there's some really good footage of him demonstrating this in there, and you'll you'll see the power of it. And I think it goes, it's a little counterintuitive. But what it does is when you get that subcommunication right, which is he's been talking about and I've been talking about, mm-hmm. you'll see how easy it is, how much more power, how better you feel, how much better you feel. And that's what I really want you to get from uh, from checking out his material. So the attractive man.com. Um, is there anything else you want to say before we close this out today? Because I know you gotta get going soon. Um, is there anything you want to say to the audience? Anything particular? Yeah. yeah. Don't just watch videos. <laughs> Get yeah. out there and approach. Because yeah. I know, I know. If you're watching this on YouTube, I know it's easy to go to the next YouTube video, the next video, the next video. 
but you got to put it to practice. It's if you just study, then it's literally the same as studying a bunch of advice on fitness, like reading Arnold's book and then, re- and then like P90X and then T25 and then whatever. Right. And then going to the gym, finally, you're going to be so confused. You're not going to know what to do because you have all these different things. And everybody says, you know, different things. So instead, what, you know, go out there and put these things that we're talking to to practice and then go back and watch another video and put that to practice. It's so important to practice. That's the main thing. Get out there and actually do it because you're not increasing. You might feel like by watching tons of videos and reading tons of books that you're getting more attractive and that you're getting better, but you're not. Just like going to the gym and having all this knowledge, you're not getting muscles unless you actually lift the weight. So you got to get out there and practice. And that's super true. So there aren't that many companies out there that I recommend. A lot of them out there are just, you know, telling you to recite a bunch of lines and things like that. But the fearless man and Brian's crew, I highly, highly recommend. And I know that the speakers and people that they're going to bring to that event are going to be top notch. They're going to be the best in the industry and you're going to be in great hands. Awesome. Thank you. Cool. That was a good interview. That was fun. Yeah, it was. And uh, on that note, I want to thank Artisan for coming down. Thank you. Matt. Make sure you check out Matt's website, theattractiveman.com. Make sure you check out some of his videos. Get out there and practice. And coming up pretty soon, we've got the Fearless Man Live. Fearless's first larger event. It's going to be a two-day event. We're going to be uh, going over topics all day long. It's only two ninety-seven for this event, so make sure you check it out now. Unfortunately, we can't have Matt at this one, but Matt's going to be coming to one soon. And the reason that is, it's the Fearless Man Live. Uh, we do a lot of demonstration, so communication, we do a lot of demonstration of being in presence, who you're being, exactly what we've been talking about in this video, how to convey beingness, presence, and charisma uh, before you even really move, just through eye contact, through voice tone, before you, before the words even hit them, through the emotions you transfer, through the way you touch. And Matt's a master of this, and what I would love to do is invite him to be at one of these future events. Unfortunately, he won't be at the next one, but I'm sure we can get him out to one. Absolutely. And uh, get him up to do some demos and uh, get him some some attractive women that he could enjoy demonstrating this with. If you can get out to this next one, make sure you get out. If not, make sure you get out to one in the future. And there'll be a link in this video to that event. Uh, With that said, remember, only the confident really lives. Take care.